the Trump administration is pointing out that, oh yeah, by the way, the WHO is garbage heap. So yesterday, President Trump issued a letter to the WHO saying we need systemic change inside the WHO because you guys didn't just blow this, you blew this royally. You were taking all of your advice from the Chinese government. And let's just be real about this. The Chinese government is a flaming trash heap. The Chinese government is an evil government. You know, Ronald Reagan suggested that the Soviet government was the evil empire. The Chinese government is in fact an evil empire. It is an evil government. It is a government that, that jails a million Uyghurs for the crime of being Muslim. It is a government that keeps a billion people in repression. It is a government that will maybe, will certainly jail you and maybe kill you if you cross them. It is a government that is trying to claw back all of its treaty obligations to Hong Kong. It is a government that would love nothing better than to take over Taiwan, a free and independent Taiwan. It is a government that lies routinely to the world population. It is a government that, that is, it, it is a full-on dictatorship. The fact that anybody treats China as a legitimate world power, as opposed to an illegitimate government that is a world power, is beyond me. China is an evil empire. It has been an evil empire for a very long time. They were involved in the forced abortion of literally millions and millions of children. They were involved in the forced sterilization of hundreds of thousands of women. This is a government that, they're the one, their one child policy spanned from like 1970 to 2015. This is an evil, evil government. It's an evil government. And the fact that people are defending that government because they hate Trump so much is truly astonishing to me. So how evil is this government? So Mike Pompeo, gave a congratulation to the Taiwanese president on her second term. And she, she sent a message to President Tsai Ing-wen on her inauguration. He was the first U.S. Secretary of State to applaud a Taiwanese president on their election, according to the Chinese government, which demonstrates, by the way, how pathetic the American government has been on this issue for a very long time. Taiwan ought to be free and independent. One of the great tragedies of history is that Mao Zedong won the battle against Chiang Kai-shek. Would that all of China were governed by the same people who govern Taiwan, not the other way around. Okay, so the U.S. issued a congratulations to Taiwan, which, by the way, we have a defense obligation to. And the Chinese government immediately said that Pompeo's, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, his statement seriously violated the One China Principle. F the One China Principle. The One China Principle is a bunch of crap. They say that, that it's one, one nation, and China, it's one China, two countries. Taiwan is not China. Is not governed the same way as China. Hong Kong is not China, which is why you're seeing tens of thousands of people out in the streets. By the way, under cover of this coronavirus pandemic, China is cracking down on all dissent inside Hong Kong. Everybody's ignoring that. Remember, right before the coronavirus pandemic back in January, there was a lot of talk about repression in Hong Kong. China, China is now taking advantage of the pandemic to crack down and arrest all of the leaders of that, of that effort against China. China took exception to Pompeo referring to Tsai as president. Pompeo said in his statement, her re-election by a huge margin shows she has earned the respect, admiration, and trust of the people of Taiwan. He said, her courage and vision in leading Taiwan's vibrant democracy is an inspiration to the region and the world. As we look toward the future, I'm confident that with President Tsai at the helm, our partnership with Taiwan will continue to flourish. China immediately got angry because they said that it's very bad that we pointed out that someone was elected in Taiwan. Better that the leader should be selected by the Politburo and there should be no elections, apparently. The ministry, the foreign ministry of China said, China urges the U.S. side to immediately correct its mistakes. The Chinese side will take necessary countermeasures to respond to the above mentioned erroneous actions by the U.S. side. The U.S. side should bear the consequences arising therefrom. Consequences arising therefrom? How about you bear some consequences for unleashing a pandemic that's going to kill probably a million people on planet Earth and destroy the entire world economy for a year? Maybe you should bear the consequences of that. How about you, you should bear the consequences of taking control of the WHO? By the way, there's some pretty incestuous ties between the Chinese government and the WHO, including high-ranking members of the WHO being married to members of the Chinese government. But according to the New York Times, President Trump's angry demands for punitive action against the WHO were rebuffed on Tuesday by the organization's other members who decided to conduct an impartial independent examination of the WHO's response to the coronavirus pandemic. And a four-page later, late Monday night, Trump threatened to permanently cut off U.S. funding to the WHO unless it committed to major substantive improvements within 30 days. That was a significant escalation of his repeated attempts to blame the WHO in China for the spread of the virus and deflect responsibility for his own handling of a crisis that has killed more than 90,000 people in the United States. Let me just point out how disgusting the New York Times coverage is here. Trump points out the WHO is a disaster area. They are a disaster area. They lied to the public for weeks about human-to-human -human transmission. They suggested that China was handling this thing better than anybody else, that China was being fully transparent. Dr. Tedros is a disaster area at the WHO. He's not even a medical doctor, by the way. Okay, the fact is, that criticizing the WHO in China is not a deflecting tactic. It is a reality of life. But the, the way that the New York Times covers that, that's an editorial decision, right? They say that when Trump rips on China and the WHO, 
It's to, quote, deflect responsibility for his own handling of the crisis. Or alternatively, it is to criticize China for unleashing this pandemic around the world, knowing full damn well that there was human to human transmission and allowing five million citizens to leave the Wuhan area while they knew that this disease was spreading widely. Representatives of the organization's member nations rallied around the WHO. There's a damn shock. You mean that Russia and China resisted the United States? The European Union chided Trump's heated rhetoric, even as they acknowledged the need to review the WHO's response as the virus spread from China to the rest of the world. That's because the EU is filled with a bunch of pansies who are afraid to stand up to the Chinese government because the Chinese government does a lot of business with them. Same deal as the EU refusing to stand up to Iran when the United States under President Trump was the only country willing to stand up to Iran. Public health experts noted Trump's threats to withdraw from the organization and permanently halt funding ignored the reality that any such moves would require the consent of Congress. But the president's continued attacks on the WHO said experts. Oh, experts said, wow, you know, unnamed experts saying things. Woo! Color me really concerned. Threatened to hobble the organization and seriously damage international efforts to combat the virus. Which was more damaging? Trump threatening to cut off funding unless they get their act together or the WHO never having their act together in the first place? Yesterday, President Trump said the WHO has to clean up their act. He's not talking about the, the rock musical Tommy. Here, here's President Trump going after the who. What reforms do they need to do? To well, it's just on the letters. I don't want to go through it. The letter is a very detailed, long letter. Uh, but basically, they have to clean up their act. They have to do a better job. They have to be much more fair to other countries, including the United States. So we're not going to be involved with them anymore. We'll do it a separate way. Okay. okay so he is exactly right about all of this. And what's amazing about this is Trump is such a polarizing figure for the media that the media immediately leap to defend China. The only reason to blame China, the only reason to blame the Chinese government, which again is evil, the only reason to blame them is because, the, is because Trump is, is very bad at his job. Now again, should we point out at this point that the deaths per million in the United States stands below most European nations outside of Germany? Is it okay to point out that the vast botchery of this thing mainly happened in New York? That somehow Florida handled it okay, Texas handled it okay, even California handled it okay. Washington state had an early outbreak and then got it under control. Is it okay to point out that Trump got the ventilators where they need to go? And that right now we have more testing capacity than people looking to be tested? Are we allowed to point any of that out or is it just all Trump bad all the time? So Susan Rice, the garbage national security advisor who lied to the American public repeatedly about the Benghazi attacks, which I know we're not supposed to talk about the scandal of the Benghazi attacks, in which the State Department routinely turned down requests for additional security in Libya and then tried to pretend that the attack was spontaneous and not planned and was, in fact, driven by a YouTube video. I know we're supposed to pretend that was not a big deal at all. And, you know, big deal, you Benghazi, and then you put it in a tweet and you put it with letters vertically. We're supposed to pretend that was not a big deal. Susan Rice went on national TV and lied about it like a thousand times. Now she is considered a possible presidential, vice presidential pick for Joe Biden. And we're going to get to Susan Rice on China. By the way, if this is a battle that Trump has to fight, this is like the best election battle ever for Trump. If this election comes down to Trump pointing out that China's a garbage heap and the Democrats suggesting that Trump is just a meanie for targeting China, that is a battle Trump wins every time. So one of the funny things is watching the New York Times editorial side decide the New York Times objective media coverage. So the objective media coverage, so much objectivity, so much media ising. It's so much journalism. I mean, just incredible levels of objective journalism happening over at the New York Times. So they'll actually headline things like deflecting from his own incompetence. Trump blames China. And that'll be their objective news story. And then you head on over to the op-ed page and why there's Susan Rice just writing the same thing. So Susan Rice says there's a long history of American presidential candidates using China as a campaign cudgel from Bill Clinton blasting President George H.W. Bush in 1992 for dealing with a Chinese premier known as the butcher of Beijing to Donald Trump's 2016 attack that the Obama administration had allowed China to rape the United States while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. This election year, China bashing will reach a new level as Mr. Trump seeks to capitalize on high voter disapproval of China, Beijing's failure to contain the coronavirus, and persistent bilateral tensions between our countries. Well, it seems like those are all relevant factors, like the fact that, again, China is an evil, evil government that has released virus and then tried to blame the United States for the release of the virus, and also that they're a repressive, horrifying regime. But according to Susan Rice, Trump is just a meanie, desperate to obscure the reality of more than 90,000 American deaths and 36 million unemployed amid Mr. Trump's utterly incompetent handling of the pandemic. Republicans have no better strategy than to play the China card. The Republicans are executing a 57-page campaign memo that recommends branding opponents soft on China and reveals their rationale for repeated refrains of China virus and Wuhan lab. Again, this was released from Wuhan. We don't know if it happened from a Wuhan lab. If we don't believe that it was released intentionally or that it was created in the Wuhan lab. That is not the suggestion. 
But China won't allow any investigation and, in fact, has threatened sanctions against places like Australia for suggesting some sort of independent investigation. But Susan Rice is really mad about this. She, she says that it's very, we, we, cannot, we cannot be so mean to China. First, she tries to claim that Biden is, is really harsh on China, which is hilarious. I mean, truly hilarious. Joe Biden flew to China with his son, and then his son received like a billion dollar investment in a fund in which he was, that he was running while Biden was vice president. Like they flew on Air Force Two to China. He and Hunter did. And Hunter picked up bags of cash. This is something that Hunter frequently did, obviously. But says Susan Rice, Mr. Trump will run his standard play, trying to deflect responsibility for his monumental failings by dishonestly projecting onto Mr. Biden his own weakness on China. Trump seemingly will do anything to win in November. His China gambit may be the least of it. Still campaigning on China while a well-worn strategy is particularly dangerous in these tense times when it fuels anti-Asian hostility at home and anti-American sentiment abroad. Okay, so this is going to be the other angle that is run by the media is that every time Trump mentions China, it's because he wants Chinese Americans targeted, which is absurd. Trump has repeatedly talked about how stupid that is, and it is indeed stupid. But the, the, it, it, it is amazing to watch how the objective journalism side takes its cues directly from the op-ed page over at the New York Times. By the way, talking about soft on China, never forget that it was Joe Biden who suggested that a travel ban on citizens coming from Wuhan in China that that was actually xenophobic hysteria. Here was Joe Biden doing just that back in January. A national emergency, you know, worldwide alerts. The American people need to have a president who they can trust what he says about it, that he is going to act rationally about it. In moments like this, this is where the credibility of president is most needed, as he explains what we should and should not do. This is no time for Donald Trump's record of hysteria, xenophobia, hysterical xenophobia. And that's, it's time for Joe Biden to go back to sleep. He needs, he needs his nap or he gets a little tired in the middle of these events. Rachel Maddow, by the way, over at MSNBC doing the same routine. She was full on defending the WHO. This is where we are. And what is her basis for defense? Her basis for defense is in a four page letter. There is one error. They cite the Lancet Medical Journal to the notion that this thing may have been spreading since November or December. There was, in fact, a report that this thing may have been spreading from November or December. Lancet came out and said, we don't want to be used as a tool against the WHO because all of these medical organizations rely on the WHO and work with the WHO. Rachel Maddow that went on a rant last night about how we have to stop being mean to the WHO. And Trump is just terrible for being mean to the WHO. Honestly, if you want to make this your campaign that you're going to defend the WHO in China for their behavior during this pandemic, go for it, guys. I mean, really, own it. Just like own it. Here's Rachel Maddow owning it. President's letter said, quote, we know the following. The WHO consistently ignored credible reports of the virus spreading in Wuhan in early December 2019 or even earlier, including reports from the Lancet Medical Journal. Well, the Lancet Medical Journal wrote to the White House today to say, oh, my God, what are you talking about? I'm paraphrasing that, but that's basically what they I mean, here's what they actually said. I can quote it. Quote, this statement is factually incorrect. The Lancet published no report in December 2019 referring to a virus or outbreak in Wuhan or anywhere else in China. OK, that that is true. It is also true that the that the Lancet did report later that it is possible that there was some sort of outbreak that took place earlier than December. They say the first reports the journal published were on January 24th, 2020. In a paper by Chao Lin Huang and colleagues, the first 41 patients from Wuhan from, with COVID-19 were described. The scientists and physicians who led the study were all from Chinese institutions. They worked with us quickly to make information about the new epidemic outbreak and disease it caused fully and freely available to an international audience. That, that's not what Trump was referring to, but okay, fine. So let, let's assume that was just a blatant error. Does that, does that invalidate any of the other four pages of problems that are cited with, Wuhan, with, with, the, with the WHO? Of course not. So go for it, guys. I mean, really go for it. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the country. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.